Hello everyone, and welcome back to Total Organic Chemistry. This time we're continuing our discussion of electrophilic aromatic substitution. We're going to be talking about directing groups. By the end of this video, the questions that you should be able to answer for yourself are how do substituents control the regioselectivity of EAS reactions, and how do I predict the products of EAS on substituted benzenes? If you need some review on electrophilic aromatic substitutions in general, please go ahead and subscribe and click on the video at the top of the screen. Up until now, we've only been talking about EAS reactions on just benzene without any substituents. But what if we want to perform a reaction on this compound, which is called anisole? We have the benzene ring here, and then we have a methoxy group on one of the carbons. So say we want to brominate this compound. Remember, we're going to use bromine, Br2, for this reaction. And it turns out that because the methoxy group is so activating to the ring, remember this oxygen atom is very electron donating to the ring, which is going to increase the rate of our EAS reaction. Because of this, we actually don't need a Lewis acid catalyst. So if we just add bromine to this compound, we will be able to add bromine to the ring. So what's the product going to be? Well, we have the original ring here. We have the benzene and the methoxy group, but we don't know which position the bromine will end up at. So the way we denote that is we draw a line going into the ring, and we just draw the Br on the end of it. So that shows that we're not quite sure where the bromine is going to add onto the ring. To answer this question, we can take a look at three different possibilities. And we're going to be drawing a lot of resonance structures here, so be sure to click the video at the top of the screen for some review on drawing resonance structures. First, we're going to consider the bromine performing a substitution on the ortho position, and ortho means that two substituents on the benzene ring are next to each other. We could also say that this is a 1,2 disubstituted benzene. And remember that in our general EAS mechanism, we're going to end up with this broken aromaticity. So we have the bromine and a hydrogen on this carbon adjacent to the methoxy carbon, and then a positive charge on this other carbon. And because we have these double bonds, we can delocalize this positive charge to other carbons in the ring. So if we draw this double bond coming down, we can draw another resonance structure where we have still the six-membered ring, the bromine and hydrogen on this carbon over here, and the methoxy group on the carbon next to that. And then we have two double bonds on sort of opposite edges here. We can draw yet another resonance structure, moving this double bond up to give us a structure with the positive charge on this carbon. And this is the carbon to which the methoxy group is bonded now. And if you notice here, we remember that oxygen has lone pairs that it can donate to the ring, so we can swing one of those lone pairs down to the ring to capture that positive charge, and draw yet another resonance structure, where now we have the two double bonds in the ring, but now we have a double bond between carbon and oxygen, and now this positive formal charge is on the oxygen atom. And this additional resonance structure shows that we have some extra resonance stabilization during the EAS reaction when the bromine is substituting on the ortho position to the methoxy group. Okay, so now let's consider the bromine attacking one carbon over. This is going to be called the meta position. And meta, you can also think of as 1,3 disubstituted. Again, we have that bromine and hydrogen on the same carbon and the positive formal charge on the adjacent carbon atom. And we can do the same thing that we just did, draw a variety of resonance structures. We can move this double bond over, to put the positive charge on this topmost carbon here. And we can also move this double bond up to have a final resonance structure with the positive charge on this carbon on the left. You might notice that here we've run out of options. So in this case, there is no configuration that allows the oxygen to donate its lone pair to the ring. So for the meta substitution, we have no added stabilization due to resonance. Our last option now is what's called para substitution, and para means that the bromine will be opposite the methoxy group. So this is also known as 1,4 disubstituted benzenes. In this case, we will have the positive charge on this carbon, and we can again form a resonance structure by moving this double bond up, allowing the positive charge to be on this carbon again. And just like we had with the ortho substitution, 
This positive charge is on the carbon adjacent to the oxygen, so we can bring that lone pair down from the oxygen to give us an additional resonance structure with the positive formal charge on the oxygen atom. And if we want, we could also go back to this second resonance structure and draw one of these double bonds in the ring, coming up to delocalize that positive charge some more, giving us one final structure with the positive charge on the bottommost carbon. So again, we have some extra stabilization due to resonance for this intermediate. What this ends up meaning is that electron donating substituents, like this methoxy group, are what we call ortho para directors. This means that electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions will favor the ortho and para products, whereas the meta product, or the 1,3 product, will not be observed as much. Now let's move on to a different substituent. What if we look at nitrobenzene, where we have this nitro group? In this case, remember that nitro is very electron withdrawing and very deactivating to EAS reactions. So if we want to brominate this ring, we're going to have to use Br2 as usual. We're also going to need this Lewis acid because the ring is so deactivated. Just like before, this will give us a substituted nitrobenzene, where we have still the nitro group in the same position. And again, I'll just draw this big line through the ring to show that the bromine atom can be on any of these carbons. Again, let's draw some different resonance structures to determine which of the ortho, meta, or para substituents will be favored. First, we can consider the ortho product. So again, that's going to be the bromine and hydrogen on this carbon adjacent to the carbon with the nitro group. We have this positive charge on the bottom carbon here, and we can move this double bond over to that positive charge to draw an additional resonance structure where that positive charge is now on this carbon, and we have two double bonds opposite each other. Then we can do another resonance structure, moving this double bond over inside the ring, and this will give us this next structure where the positive charge is now on this carbon. However, this time I can draw out the full Lewis structure for the nitro group, so we can see now that we have a formal positive charge on the nitrogen, and that is adjacent to this formal positive charge on the carbon. What that means is that this is going to be a very bad resonance contributor. These two positive charges right next to each other are not going to be happy. They want to be more separated. Just like before, let's try out the meta product now. So we'll have the bromine now on the bottommost carbon. What we can do is we can move this double bond down to give a second resonance contributor with that positive charge on the topmost carbon. And we can repeat moving this pi bond over to give a final resonance structure with the positive charge on this carbon inside the ring. And what we notice here is that there are no really bad contributors like we saw with the ortho product. So this will be a relatively stable configuration. Finally, I will leave it up to you to draw out the resonance structures for the para substituent, and you can convince yourself that the para substituent will have the same behavior as the ortho. So in this case, the ortho product is going to be destabilized due to those positive charges right next to each other, and you can convince yourself again that the para substituent will have the same issue. In general, electron withdrawing groups or deactivating groups like the nitro group are labeled as meta-directing. So these meta-substitutions are going to be more stable, and ortho and para-attack will be highly disfavored. One final type of substituent we can discuss are benzenes with halogens on them. So we can imagine bromobenzene. And in this case, let's perform an aromatic nitration, where we have, remember, nitric acid and concentrated sulfuric acid. And just as before, this will give us the substituted bromobenzene, where we have the nitro group on some unspecified carbon in the ring. And if you bear with me here, let's do this whole process again, drawing out first the ortho substitution intermediate. We will have this nitro group and the hydrogen on the carbon adjacent to the carbon with the bromine on it. As usual, we can swing down this pi bond to move the positive charge. To this upper left carbon, 
and again swing over this double bond to move the positive charge to this carbon. And we see now that this carbon is the same one with the bromine on it. And if you remember, halogens have lone pairs that they can donate to the ring. So we can draw yet another resonance structure where the bromine has formed a double bond with this carbon and the bromine now has a positive formal charge. So this might remind you of the methoxy substituent we saw at the beginning of the video. This extra resonance structure will give us some extra stabilization for this intermediate. Let's do this one last time for the meta substitution. The positive charge is now on this bottom right carbon. We can take the pi bond and swing it down to that positive charge to move the positive formal charge to the topmost carbon. And one last time, move this double bond up to give us the last resonance structure with the positive charge on this carbon. And we see here that no configuration corresponds to the positive charge on the same carbon with the bromine, so we won't be able to get that extra stabilization from the bromine. Just like with the previous example, I'll leave it up to you to draw the resonance structures for the para substitution and tell yourself that it's going to behave the same way as the ortho. So what this means is that although halogens are mildly deactivating to EAS reactions, so something like bromobenzene will perform an EAS slower than regular unsubstituted benzene, but they are indeed ortho para directors due to that ability to donate their lone pairs to the ring. So that's something to keep in mind when performing syntheses with halogenated benzene rings. Let's end the video with one example on how to use these in practice. So if we start with this starting material, where we have an alkyl group on this carbon, so we'll have an ethyl group here, and then we will have a nitro group on the bottom carbon, and remember that one three dive substitution pattern is going to be labeled as meta, and say we want to chlorinate this ring. So we're going to use chlorine, Cl2, and some Lewis acid, because we have this deactivating group, the nitro group here. We can use something like iron three chloride. Now, where is the chlorine going to go on this ring? So this might be a tricky question at first. We have two different substituents now that they're going to be directing to different carbons. So if we look at the ethyl group, we'll label that in red. Remember that alkyl groups are electron donating or activating to EAS reactions. So this will be an ortho para director. That means it will direct substitutions to this carbon on top, this carbon here, and this last carbon. Those are the locations that are ortho and para to the ethyl group. Next, we can label this nitro group in blue. And remember that nitro is a deactivating group, so it is meta directing. And the only meta position that does not already have a substituent on it is this carbon over here. So how do we choose where the chlorine will end up? Well, the general rule is that the strongest activator is going to win out in this situation. So our regioselectivity in this case will be governed by the ethyl group because it is a stronger activator than the nitro group. So that means we will get a mixture of some products. We will get this ortho product where the chlorine is ortho to the ethyl group. We will also get some of the para product where the chlorine is para to the ethyl group. And our last product that you might draw is with the chlorine between the ethyl and nitro groups. So this is an ortho product to the ethyl group. However, it likely won't be formed in large amounts because positions between two other groups on a benzene ring are going to be very sterically hindered. So it'll be pretty difficult for the chlorine to get in between those two substituents, and we won't see a lot of this product. So I hope this video helped you understand the concept of directing groups in electrophilic aromatic substitutions. If you liked it, please go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media, and if you're able, consider donating to my Patreon page, which helps me to continue creating all of this content for all of you. Thanks for watching.